about the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'm particularly excited about this audience because I've worked on transformation projects now for about 11 years. And um, Service Desk, they are really the unsung heroes of these IT transformations. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through. But there's a real privilege to be here and thank you very much for uh, to the Service Desk Institute for inviting me. So let's go on. Okay, so we're gonna talk briefly about why do IT projects fail? Uh, what's the impact and what can we do about it? I should have said that first slide there with a picture of the head in the sand is the real theme for this presentation because you know, companies shouldn't hide away when things are going wrong. It's about taking action, recognizing that things are going a little bit off track and doing something about it. So not to bury your head in the sand. And here's a little fail meme for you. The other reason I've put that up is because wherever I've worked, whether I've been a permanent employee or a project resource, uh, service desk always have the best memes, and the best jokes. So hopefully that will resonate with you. Uh, so that's me. Uh, just a little brief bit about me. So founder of Law for Night, I've been, I would say, at the sharp end of large scale IT transformation programs for the last 11 years. Um, and it's a roller coaster, but it's been thoroughly enjoyable all the way through. Uh, my main areas of expertise are training, comms and change. So I've sometimes been training lead, sometimes comms lead, sometimes change lead. And I've also done a hybrid role sometimes of all three of those, but I wouldn't recommend that if you value your sanity. So just a very brief couple of slides about my company. Um, although we're focused on training and communications, mainly we sort of look at the, the whole employee life cycle. Um, so we have a few brands. We've got Career Propeller, which is uh, about helping candidates to get better at interviews. So on that platform, there's loads of free training, which is particularly relevant at the moment. Obviously, unfortunately, you know, with what's happened this year, lots of redundancies and that sort of thing. So we're seeing lots of people go there to get hints and tips on the on the interview process. Uh, we then got Onboard, which is about onboarding, and that is about easing people into their new role um, and recognizing there's a gap in the recruitment process between acceptance and start date. So that's a digital platform full of training that helps people to ease into their new role. And then Law for Night, and that's really where the focus is today. It's about training and communications, um, helping you to develop your people. Um, a lot of what we do is, uh, is IT training as well. So we do lots of transformation programs, but we also do, you know, we work with companies to help them to make the most of their IT investments. Um, because obviously user uptake is really, really important after you've made the investment in the system in the first place. So we're going to have a look at a, just for a couple of minutes, a case study, which is probably one of the highest profile failures um, that you can read about online. And this is a national program for IT, uh, which was in the NHS. It was also called Connecting for Health. And that was sort of conceived in about 2002. And it had three main sort of high profile deliverables. There were others as well, such as the NHS spine, which is an, uh, which was the network basically to, for high speed communications. Um, but these were three that were, were very sort of high profile at the time. NHS care records, that's about digitizing the care records. So putting your uh, care records online, patient access to records. So you and I as end users of the health service could go online and see our patient record. And there was a choose and book system, which was uh, for, for end users, but also for doctors. So if you if they were referring you to someone, they could go into a system and find an appropriate appointment and book that online. The budget for that uh, project when it was conceived in 2002 was around 2.3 billion. So let's have a look um, at where we are now. So 2020, um, and this is sort of freely available information online. Um, out of 217 NHS trusts in terms of the care records, digitizing those care records, only 20 have been completed. And that's actually still ongoing. The, the, the program itself was shut down a few years ago, but there are still remnants of it going on um, under other names. The patient access to records did go live, but wasn't a great success, it was shut down in 2012. Choose and Book similarly did go live, but was shut down in 2015. And the budgets went from 2.3 billion to a conservative estimate of about 12 billion but actually if you research there are plenty of articles that, that put it at 20 billion plus so far because as i say some of it is still 
ongoing and I actually had personal experience of this program which I'll come to shortly. So the government uh, commissioned a report into what went wrong seeing as it was such a high profile failure um, and there's a, a widely sort of, uh, sort of uh, shared quote which is one of the worst and most expensive contracting fiascos in public sector history so not really a ringing endorsement of what happened um, and what they found was there was a they took a top-down approach so that's you know the, the high levels of leadership saying this is happening and, and uh, you know you have to sort of uh, adopt it basically um, secondly there was no buy-in from the actual users and this is where I mentioned I had personal experience I was actually in recruitment in 2006 before I moved into training and we had project managers working on this program so we had placed several project managers into the national program for IT and after a few weeks they actually came back to us and they were screaming saying can you can you get us out of here it's an extremely hostile environment and we just can't carry on so they were they'd been put in there to implement some of the care records digitizing of care records a software solution um, and they found that they were doing a hybrid role actually which again I said I wouldn't recommend as I said earlier which was implementing the software but also training the end users they're quite different roles but they were tasked with doing both of those things and they found when they went into the trusts that um, they were not given the time and resources they needed to actually do the implementation but when it came to uh, training people they just didn't want to know and um, there was a lot of hostility so people weren't turning up to training sessions they were disengaged and they were outwardly sort of hostile because really this was the first time they'd see the, the, the actual end users so the doctors and the nurses had seen anyone from the program was when they stood up to to do the training and so all of that hostility came out um also they found there was a lack of leadership planning and application of change management so you know clearly that the upfront work hadn't been done to engage the users and this is a sort of the theme of my presentation here today so we'll look at some other examples uh, fox mayer was a big uh, drugs company five billion dollar drugs company it actually failed it went out of business um and a lot of that has been blamed on, a, on an elp implementation that went wrong so the consequences of getting these things wrong can be catastrophic this is uh, queensland in australia they implemented a payroll system and it was called the worst failure of public administration uh, and it cost the taxpayer 1.2 billion dollars uh, worth and co interminable rollout leads to a lawsuit so and this is only a few years ago this is about five or six years ago worth and co is a manufacturing company in the states implementing oracle the project went wrong and uh, the upshot of that is that they're actually suing oracle for five million dollars i believe uh, here's another article 900 billion dollar reason ge ford and procter and gamble uh, invested 1.3 trillion in transformation initiatives and they think that 70 percent of that was wasted so that's 900 billion dollars uh, wasted and you know i'm going to highlight here what they said was the reason for that failure to effectively communicate their goals strategy purpose and outlook with their employees now Siddharth in his previous in the presentation previously which is which I really enjoyed um, mentioned benefits and communications uh, that they they found that those things were, were uh, very critical when they looked back at their project and I'd echo that completely this is this is where these projects go wrong generally it's not generally technology um, it's it's the actual adoption of the system and get bringing people on the journey this one is about a company that implemented a CRM system. And I'm gonna highlight one quote here, which is we got to project end and the sales force didn't want it. I mean, you, you can't imagine undertaking the whole project and these projects, if it's on a large scale, will probably take a year or longer. Um, but imagine getting to the end of it and the sales force turning around saying, well, we didn't want this. You know, there clearly has been no engagement there at all um, and no attempt to involve the users in the project um, and here's one of my personal experiences this quote at the bottom I was tasked with training um, thousands of users on a CRM system so went into the client and their change approach was to involve leadership um, at the beginning of the training session so my role on that was purely training um, face to face training so uh, they had someone from leadership at each office would stand up 
and deliver a business presentation at the beginning of each training session. Um, and this person you know, clearly hadn't been engaged. There was no stakeholder management involved, certainly where in his case, because I, th I think he felt, because it was a satellite office and he was very visible in that office, that he was somewhat responsible. So, um, and I think he panicked a bit and he basically said at the end of his presentation, we all know this software is crap, uh, but we still have to learn how to use it now. And then he sort of left the room and, left, and, th and that was the beginning of my training session. So you can imagine how I felt you know, stood up in front of 15 people glaring at me. Um, and I actually said to them, you know, we need to draw a line under what's been said. I actually think this system is very good. Um, I'm not here to tell you why you have to use it or, or that you should use it. I'm just here to tell you how. And at the end of today, you need to know how to use it. And I think that as we go through, you will see that actually there are lots of benefits to using it. And, in, and indeed, that is what happened. Um, but it's just an example of, you know, if the change management and the communications haven't been done properly, this is often where these projects uh, go wrong. And so bringing it back to, to all of you listening out there, what's the impact on the service desk? These are the things that I have seen on projects, high call volumes. Um, Siddharth was talking about, you know, call volumes in his, in his presentation previously, you're going to get a lot of calls if the upfront work hasn't been done properly um, dealing with how do I call. So, you know, ideally you don't want to be dealing with people phoning up saying, how do I submit my case? How do I reconcile this in the finance system? Or, you know, how do I create an account in the new CRM? You, that's not really where you want to be because you are the experts in problem solving and usually from a technical point of view. So you don't want to be getting involved in those um, how do I calls because it impacts on your run rate, your the normal calls that you would get day to day. And then you know, we end up with this, which is head in the hands, you know, how did we get to this point? So the work that I do is, is really aimed at um, eliminating those issues. So what can we do about it? Here's my five step plan for getting back on track and we'll cover each of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, we've got recognize that things aren't going to plan, revisit the business case, get feedback from your users, come up with an executor plan and review at regular intervals. So these are the five steps that you, once you recognize that something isn't going quite right, this, these are the things that we would recommend that you would do. So firstly, recognize things aren't going to plan. Well, that brings us back to that first slide, which is, you know, don't bury your head in the sand. You've got to do something about it. Um, here are the six sort of accepted stages of a, of a project, if you like. So definition, initiation, planning, execution, monitoring, and closure. And you will have a project team, whether that's internal or external, um, during, the, during this time. Um, in that middle third is probably where the bulk of those people are um, employed. So at either end, you'll, you'll have a smaller team as the project builds up and as the project sort of uh, tails off towards the end. And then this area here is really where business as usual starts to come in. So the project or the, the, the solution, the product rather, will be given over to um, an, an owner in IT and the service desk becomes involved because then you're actually supporting. So, you know, we've got this red zone at the end, which is if you're recognizing an issue here, it's too late. You've probably lost the users. It's very, very difficult to get people back on track once they've decided that a system is no use to them or, or it's difficult to use. It's very difficult also you're at the end of the, in terms of your resources, you don't have people in the project team anymore. So it's all on BAU and the service desk to find resources. That's very, very difficult at that point. The yellow zone is where you've, you've got some area of crossover, um, but you know essentially the project team is winding down and it's gonna be difficult to have a significant turnaround at that point. Where we want to be is this green zone and as early as possible, you have to recognize that things are going off track as early as possible. And the next few points is how we actually do that. So revisit the business case. The business case is the justification for the project. That's why the project was undertaken in the first place. And we need to look back at that because that is the, as I say, the whole reason the project was undertaken um, initially, and Siddharth mentioned in his presentation about benefits, absolutely critical. It, it all comes back to the benefits. That's benefits to the business and benefits to the users that have been identified in the business case. They then go into the change approach 
and they feed through into the communications and the training. So everything really stems from that. So you've, you've recognized there'll be benefits, savings and efficiencies from doing the project in the first place. You have to revisit those and look and see, you know, are the benefits being tracked and measured? Are the benefits being realized? Um, and are there any identifiable gaps? There will probably be clear gaps between benefits you thought you would rec you would realize and, and what's actually happening. And that's where you can start to formulate your interventions to get things back on track. So get feedback from your users is point three, absolutely critical. They will always be open and honest. Um, if it's too late down the, uh, down the line, they're gonna be very open and honest with the service desk and you really wanna be avoiding that because it's certainly not the service desk's fault that things have gone off plan. Um, you would have had an original user group that you used to sort of scope out the project. So, you know, we, we're implementing CRM or we're implementing a finance system. You'd have worked with the users early on uh, to scope out the project, so what it is about, what the actual solution looks like. You need to go back to that original user group because they'll probably be very supportive and they'll be friendly because you you have worked with them all the way through. You're also likely to have, or you should have, super user or champions network. Now they are really useful because they're on the ground, they're in the offices, in amongst the teams, and they're hearing and they're listening uh, what is going on. So they will be able to give you really, really good feedback. Try to get a cross section where possible. You really want to get people from right across the scale in terms of different roles and responsibilities, leadership, right down to sort of entry level people. If you can get a cross section of people, you're going to get much better information from them. Um, and qualitative is better. So focus groups rather than, you know, you could send out a survey monkey, for example, but firstly, you're gonna raise awareness of an issue. And secondly, what you're gonna get back is probably not gonna be very useful. You really wanna get people in a room, or if you can't do that, obviously at the moment you do that online and, and run a focus group and really understand uh, where things have sort of gone off track. Come up with an execute a plan. So clearly we need to take action and do something about it. Uh, the plan will vary depending on what you found in your investigation stages. Um, again, benefits, as Siddharth mentioned, you've got to come back to the benefits. That is why you did the project in the first place. Identify any resistance to change. So the, the gentleman I spoke about earlier who stood up at the beginning of my training session had not been engaged. He, there was no stakeholder management around him and probably the other people that were uh, asked to do those business presentations. He should have been fully on board and should have been fully supportive. Um, and that's a failure of the project that he wasn't. Specialist resources may be needed uh, where, depending on where you are on that timeline, if you're in the yellow or the red zone, then for sure you're gonna need to bring uh, people in either internally or, or, from, or from external sources to help you turn things around. And communications and training are vital. Siddharth again mentioned communications. It's absolutely critical that communications are done early enough uh, and training is involved early enough because for me, you know, fulfilling those roles on projects. Training is always like an add-on. Um, it's something that people see as a necessary evil. Sometimes I've known companies will say, well, just throw out a PDF and the users will be fine with that. You really need to think things through much earlier on because everything needs to go back to those benefits and the whole change story of why you're doing this needs to be communicated properly. Um, review at regular intervals. Uh, so, Review the plan and progress regularly, that's self-explanatory. Track outcomes and benefits closely, and there's the benefits word. Again, adjust the approach where needed, of course. Keep teams motivated and informed and show leadership. I think that towards the end of a project, everyone's tired, you know, everyone works really hard to, to, to deliver it. And especially if things are going off track, uh, it, it's even more uh, tiring and, and sort of taxing on, on, your, on your, uh, your energy and your health, et cetera. So uh, leadership need, really needs to keep people uh, motivated um, and informed. So there's a quick recap. Um, we've looked at why do IT projects fail, what's the impact and what we can do about it. And there's my final slide, which is just the, the summary of those five points. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, to Scarlett and Holly for inviting me to talk today and for the Service Desk Institute. There's my contact details at the bottom. So if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Or if you are recognizing that something might not be quite right on a project or you need help with um, user adoption, do drop me a line. And uh, I'd like to wish everyone else, everyone a Merry Christmas. And thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thanks, Jonathan. Um, we don't have any questions at the moment. And in fact, I think